and welcome to another amazing episode of Adventures in Entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Jared. This is Captain Clay, and we're here to help you navigate the tricky waters of entrepreneurship. Today, Clay, we're actually going to be talking about a book I saw you uh, post on Facebook yesterday, yeah. The Purple Cow by oh. Seth Godin. If you don't know who Seth Godin is, you should know who Seth Godin is. Type his name in on Google, and uh, he will come up multiple times. Find his blog. You will definitely want to subscribe to his blog. He always posts these very short but very insightful and very helpful uh, blogs. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to be pulling a few things out of his book, uh, The Purple Cow, talking about that. First and foremost, we're going to be talking about how uh, the, the, the American consumer has everything that they need except time. Clay, why don't you unpack this a little further for us? Uh, well, you know, I'm just taking the context of our photography business. Um, here we are in a business where brides and grooms uh, pay to have somebody professionally take their photos. And you ask yourself, why are they doing that? I mean, can't we all go out and buy a digital camera? I mean, couldn't we really? I mean, couldn't we? Do we know somebody? Yeah. Couldn't we, um, you know, just go get a camera and, and, and learn some stuff and then we could probably get a buddy who has some photo editing software and we could probably, we could do it. I mean, we, we could do that. But at the end of the day, as Americans, um, we're past where we're worrying about food and shelter and we're on to where we just started buying stuff we want. And now we have everything we want, too. We've got the car. We have the cell phone. Uh, we no longer have to uh, tell our kids, hey, get off the phone. I'm on long distance. You know, it's not a, it's not a big deal to make a long distance call anymore. It's not exciting. Um, I would even argue that in America right now, it's very hard for us to be excited by a man-made miracle anymore. People go up to space. They come back down. We don't care. It's true. You know? It's true. But back like in 85, 86, when I was in school, you know, I remember we'd go to space and we're like taking time off of school to watch them go to space. Now they go up, they come down, we don't care. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's just a, so what you have now is you're in a culture where we have everything we need, we have everything we want really, and now what we're saying is the, big, the biggest thing we want now is, is more time. More time to do what we want and more uh, time to live. And so uh, what we're getting at is we're now dealing with a consumer base that says, Look, I, could, I, I have everything I need and want. I just want more time. I want to be more convenient. And so for the photography company, what we've started doing is going, people value time. People value time. People value time. What does that mean? And I'd ask you, if you're watching this today, what does that mean for you and your business? So what we decided to do is we're offering a two-week turnaround time. We've been working on a system to refine this thing. And last year, um, our company, in its second year, did 265 uh, weddings, or 260 weddings, you know, just a hair over 260. And our leading competitor in our cities did like over 65. You know, wow. so we did four times more than anybody else with our second year um, because we're offering a two-week turnaround time and their average competitor is offering three months. Wow. So now we're trying to take it to the next level. I'm going, time, time, what else about time? You know what? The bride doesn't want to spend her time planning a wedding and driving all around Tulsa. What if we can help her get convenience where she has multiple shopping options in one location? You know? And we started going, you know what? It's true, we give her a CD and she can go to Walgreens and take these images and print them off somewhere, but she doesn't want to because that requires time. She better spend time doing something else. So how can we offer like in-house printing where we can get it to them super quick? And so everything we're doing is based on convenience and we're showing over and over and over that the consumer doesn't care paying for it. Here, here's an example. We give you a CD and Jerry, I can give you your CD of your wedding photos and the average consumer I can say, well, hey, you can go to Walgreens and print those up. And in their mind, they're thinking, hey, screw you, buddy. Why don't you print them up and I'll pay 25 bucks? You know what I'm saying? It's so true. So people just don't want to do stuff. Um, you get a computer now, and you're like, well, you have to install stuff. And we're like, why the freak should I have to install stuff? I just bought this. Uh, you know, uh, Christmas gifts, they have to be assembled. Why do I have to assemble these? You're the one. You know, we just want everything instantly. Mm -hmm. So I would just ask you today in your business, how can you show the customer that you value their time? And charge them for it. How can you charge them for more time? It's so true. It's so true. Um, I'm at a I'm at a blank right here. What else you got for well, us? Well, I just I really just want to ask. I want to challenge everybody watching this today. Think about it for a second, because you have two different worlds here. Think about this. Consumers, there's the poverty side over here, where they're not consuming anything. These mm -hmm. people are just trying to exist. But then there's consumers who buy things. Okay, so there's the prosperity mentality and the poverty mentality. If you want to attract the poverty mentality, don't sell things that show you showcase you value people's time. Sell things where it's like, do it yourself, 
build it yourself, buy it at a discount, you can build it yourself, you can assemble it, you know, give them a better deal. And there's a whole bunch of consumers that will haggle that will line up because they can save 15 bucks to build it, you know. But over here on the prosperity side is a whole bunch of people that would say, hey, we value our time, we're, we're, we're willing to pay more for that. So I would just make sure you're lining yourself with a consumer base that has the capacity to spend and not on the thrift store clientele that wants to assemble it at home because it'll save them some time and money and therefore they won't be a very prosperous customer for you. I know that's something I learned from you um, with the detail company in that when we first started out we were just like, man, we're going to undercut everybody's price. We're going to take all this business from these other guys. Arr. And we were charging the, the lowest dollar. But, and we were showing up in shorts and a ratty t-shirt, just like all the other detailers here in town, mm -hmm. and, and not really providing a great service. And we were hooking up to their water and their electricity. And it was just this really cheap product. It was a great service, but it wasn't like the best. And then we started seeing things that DJ Connection was doing and, and applied those to the detail company and that we were dressing more like this mm -hmm. to go pick, and we were actually picking up the vehicle, uh, insured, we are insured to do that, and bring it back to our shop. And so it like totally changed the game on what we were doing, and we saw no longer just like these one-time clients, but now people are coming back and like yeah. really getting great reviews on what we're doing, and people spreading the word about what we're doing, and, and we are actually charging more than double when we started. Really? from just just a few little tweaks just a few I think that tweaks. the premium services attract premium premium customers oh absolutely but you have if you have uh, bargain prices something has to give mm -hmm. um, you know I do a lot of consulting with farmers insurance and this is a thing that just boggles my mind let's say you didn't use farmers insurance let's take out my bias I have a life insurance policy through New York life and I have one through farmers It is a lot more expensive through those two companies than other companies why because they actually pay out quickly. <laughs> now this is a real real story. Um, one of the farmer's agents I talked to, uh, Matt, phenomenal guy, uh, I asked him, what's the highlight of your career as a farmer's agent? You know, this guy makes a lot of money. He said, um, we had a couple that had their home burned down and uh, within 24 hours they had a check. Wow. I mean, 24 hours. Well, yeah, their premium is 20, 30% more than other people. But they got, I mean, if your house burns down, do you want to go through the insurance process for five months while you're living out of a car? No doubt. You know, hopefully your car wasn't in the garage, you might be living under a bridge, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, but some people want to do that. So I just want to encourage you right now, when you're looking at with, with your customers, it's okay to charge a premium price as long as you offer a premium service. And just really take that discerning eye and go, am I offering a premium service? And, and that's just one thing you want to do is, am I offering the premium service and am I charging a premium price? And I encourage you to do that because American consumers value time. It's, it's so, so true. So true. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, you can always leave them on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. You can always email Clay directly at clay at makeyourlifeepic.com. Clay, 15 seconds to end off what do you have for us. Uh, I'm going to encourage you, so I'm, right now, uh, we don't want to date these videos where they get old school. But we'll just say it's Christmas, you're approaching Christmas of some year. Could be in the future, could be the past. But, um, you know, uh, I'm just going to encourage you, what do you value in terms of your time? Because I would encourage you, I mean, I, there's some things I hate doing, and I love paying people to do it. And, and, and there was a form of insanity I had years ago, and I had my own business. And I know people watching this are that way. Because if you're a business owner, you're a type A, you're a go-getter. Uh, you're going to bust your butt and do everything you can to make your business successful, but you're also that guy who's going to mow your own freaking lawn because you want to save 30 bucks, but you spend your one day off mowing your lawn, doing something you don't like. And I'm just going to encourage you, you only live once, so value your time, hire professionals to do things you don't want to do, hire the experts, let them do what they do, you do what you do, you have a much more abundant and prosperous life. There you have it, we'll see you next time.